Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Wealth Boot Camp. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is uh, a story that you might have seen in the media about uh, former NBA player Vin Baker. Uh, Vin was a very good player when he played in the NBA. He made the all-star team four times. Um, he was off the chain in terms of uh, his athletic ability. But unfortunately, uh, his money management skills uh, left a few things to be desired. Uh, he ended up um, uh, going broke. Uh, and uh, he's now working at uh, the local Starbucks uh, up in his hometown of, uh, I think he's from Rhode Island, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, this story was uh, obviously sad, uh, heartbreaking. Uh, I remember when Vin was in the NBA, I remember he had trouble with alcohol uh, and he struggled a little bit, um, you know, in the league in terms of you know personal decisions, personal situations that he uh, put himself into. But uh, throughout the course of his career, he made a lot of money. He made one hundred million dollars. Uh, and that's a lot of money to make uh, and still go broke. And uh, so one of the things I really wanted to jump into is this. Um, of course, I have concerns about Vin as a black man. Uh, I didn't understand why Starbucks, uh, the Starbucks, former Starbucks CEO, I think his last name is Schultz, uh, helped, helped Vin out by letting him work in a local Starbucks, but didn't help him out by putting him in the front office of an NBA team or let him do something like that. But that's a whole nother conversation about just general black male exploitation that occurs in collegiate and professional sports. Uh, but sometimes, uh, even though other people are always out to exploit you, sometimes you kind of sign up for the exploitation. Sometimes exploitation is a uh, it requires some degree of teamwork between you and the person that is exploiting you. Now, uh, here, here's what I want to go into real quick in terms of uh, just the sheer absurdity of then making this kind of money and going broke. A um, hundred million dollars, having that kind of money and having that money go out of your hands, uh, that is uh, just a financial tragedy of epic proportions. Um, that's the kind of money that shouldn't just take care of you for the rest of your life. That's the kind of money that should take care of you, everybody you love, and everybody they love, and everybody they give birth to, and, the, and their great-grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren for the next 300 years. You understand? If wealth is managed properly, wealth is capital. Capital is supposed to grow in value over time. That's why when you see very wealthy families, uh, they are very, very careful about making sure that each generation understands the value of the capital, how to manage the capital, how to be responsible with the capital. They've got a, a team of financial advisors. They have trust funds set up to protect the wealth so that one person can't just blow it all and screw everything up for the family. You understand? So, so when you really think about just what happened here, this isn't just a tragedy for Vin Baker. This is a tragedy for his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren, all of whom could have benefited from this money. Because when you get money of that, of just of that magnitude, what's, what's supposed to happen is that that money is supposed to work for you. It's almost like having a team of employees that are all out hustling for you, bringing in money. Um, I'll give you a good example. Mark Zuckerberg, now he's worth far more than $100 million. He's worth about $34 billion. A lot of people don't understand this, but Mark Zuckerberg, by not even working – with his money working for him, he makes more money in about four days than LeBron James makes in an entire season. He'll make more money in about four months than LeBron James will make in his entire career. You understand? So, so the 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 fact is that this um, kind of financial irresponsibility, this kind of financial craziness, uh, it should bother everybody because you have to work really, really hard to waste a hundred million dollars. I mean, you've just got to be beyond financially sloppy. Uh, you have to be financially self-destructive. It's almost like um, finding a way to chop a rock in little pieces. you got to hammer hard to break that rock into little pieces because that rock is not meant to be chopped up like that. A hundred million dollars is not meant to be wasted. It's very hard to do that. So let me just give you a quick layout in terms of uh, a very simple approach. Now, this is not rocket science. I'm not going to lay out no heavy financial concepts to you. I can, I can give you some advanced stuff. I mean, that's some of the stuff we talk about in the boot camp and all that, but I'm not going to even go into this. I'm going to give you a very simple way that we could guarantee that no NBA player would ever go broke, even if they spent money like an idiot. Look, imagine you have an NBA player who's going to make $8 million a year. Well, and let's assume his career is going to be 10 years. $8 million is, is not on the low end of NBA salaries, but it's not on the high end either. There are guys that make a whole lot more money, especially when you throw in endorsements and all these other opportunities that should come with 
being a person of that stature at that income level. Not only are you making a lot of money from your team, but you should be at some point getting endorsements. You should at some point have investments that are making money for you. You should at some point have relationships with other people that will allow you to make more money. Money should breed more money. It shouldn't just be a matter of me just getting a little paycheck from the man and and being a high paid employee and then going broke as soon as the man stops sending me money. That's not how money's supposed to work. A good financial advisor will tell you that. So imagine if this player makes eight million dollars a year. OK, cool. So you make eight million dollars a year. It's about six hundred sixty six thousand dollars a month. Now, let's assume that this player just say saves 10 percent of that income. Now I know that that's pre-tax income and taxes are going to chop away at that, but if you take if they take out that bottom 10% uh, and they put aside $67,000 a month, which would still leave them uh, well uh, about $600,000 a month. Let's say the IRS takes 350 something like that every month or whatever, the managers and all these little vultures and leeches and all these other people that are coming along taking their money, these little Harvard educated agents and managers and attorneys, all of whom are waiting for these young brothers to come into the league and make all this money so they can find a way to exploit them because it's not a coincidence that many of our most prominent, most uh, capable black athletes are left severely uneducated. A fool and his money will always part ways. Never, ever be a fool. The most valuable thing a black man can have in America is his education. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. So all these vultures come along. The vultures take their cut. So uh, so let's say that after the vultures take their cut, there's 350 left. You take out 66 off the top. So you got between a quarter million to $300,000 a month. Now, let's think about that. That's a quarter million dollars a month that you have that you can do whatever you want with. You go to the club, throw it in the air, you can make it rain, you can go buy your Bentley, you can get you a, a garage full of stupid cars and spend your money in Gucci and, all, and Prada and all these other European brands that don't want to hire black people. You can do all of that stupid stuff if you want to. You can just be an absolute fool with the rest of your money. But you put aside that $67,000 a month, you put it into an investment portfolio. Now. Let's say that you do that consistently. You give you you go to your mama, you go to somebody that you trust, your uncle Willie, your 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 sister, your investment advisor, whoever, and you say, look, every month you're gonna take sixty-seven thousand dollars or ten percent of my income out of my check. I can't touch it. You have legal rights to that money. I'm, I have to pay you like a bill. You are my first bill that I get before I get a mortgage, a car note, and all the other things that might leave me broke. So that's your first bill, $67,000 a month, going to this, this, this account. Now, they take this money, they put it into a mutual fund that has average risk level for the stock market. So they, they'll know what to do. The good financial advisors will know how to put your money into a, a diversified portfolio, a mutual fund, something like that. Just tell them to do that. Ask them to watch this video. If you're an NBA player or an NBA player's mama or somebody who wants the best for their child, uh, tell them to just put it in a diversified portfolio with an average risk level that matches that of the stock market. Let's assume that over the, that decade that that player is in the NBA, so he has a, a, a reasonably long career, but not too long, right? Ten years. Ten years is, 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 is not quite a, a really long career, but it's not a short career either, right? So he does ten years in the NBA, makes $8 million a year, doesn't get any pay raises, which is another very conservative assumption because he should get pay raises, right? But, but he, he makes $8 million a year for ten years, $80 million a year, or $80 million total, 10%, that's $67,000 a month, boom, 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 being put into that account. It's, grow, it's being invested in the portfolio, growing over time. And let me tell you how, about the magic of compound interest. You see, a lot of people, if you ask them, well, how much money will you have if you invest $67,000 a month over 10 straight years? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to – a lot of people are going to take 160 – or uh, sorry, excuse me, 67000 multiplied by 120 months, right? That's 10 years. They're going to say, oh, yeah, man, you have $8 million. That's amazing. But what they're not factoring in is the power of compound interest. The fact that money grows on top of money, which grows on top of money. Money grows like uh, the way a virus grows, right? You ever have you ever think about a virus? A virus could be spread amongst four people, but then those four people might each infect four people, and then those four people may infect four more people. Next thing you know, a hundred million people have the same virus that started with four people. Money grows like that. Money grows in a very natural, like viral sense. That's why a lot of our financial equations that we studied in school uh, are built actually on biology and the way uh, the way things grow in nature. So so money grows on top of money. So actually, instead of that 67000 a month growing into $8 million, 
that 67,000 a month will grow into over 12 million at an 8% rate of return. Now, if he's able to get a higher rate of return, which which actually is not that hard to do, I usually get about 30 to 40% a year on my investments because I invest in dot coms and I invest in companies where I see opportunities to flip money and make big money really fast. So so you can actually, I mean, if you're a smart investor, you can make 20, 30, 40, 50% a year on your money. I put money, I put $5,000 in the businesses that made me a quarter million dollars in the next two years. So there's ways to make more, but let's assume that you're very conservative. You're only making about 8% on your money, six, you know, something like that. Okay. Well, so you, you would have $12 million by the time you're done. Now, $12 million, um, that is enough, enough money for you to live off for the rest of your life. That's the kind of money that you could put in a trust fund. Give yourself a nice salary. Give yourself half a million dollars a year, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever. Add that to your NBA pension on top of that and still live like a baller for the rest of your life. You don't have to go broke Um just because you want to spend a little bit of money. That's the thing. People think that you have to be financially frugal and prudent in order to build wealth. You don't have to do that. You just have to have balance. You have to not be so determined to throw all your money away. And that's one of the things that I don't understand. I really wish that that, that there was some mechanism where these guys could really get the kind of advice they need to get because whoever's advising these guys is, is screwing them. A lot of these people, they'll take their little fee off the top and they don't care what happens to your black But once your NBA career is over. They're going to take their money. They're going to take that money. They're going to build wealth for their family. They're going to build generational wealth. They're sending their kids to Harvard. They're making sure their daughter has her wedding paid for. They're making sure their son has his first down payment on the house. They're making sure their kids aren't going to have to go $100,000 in debt to go to college. They're making sure that each generation in their family is not starting over. So when you look at Vin Baker, the tragedy here is that his children and his grandchildren and his great grandchildren will have to start over. That is sick. That is sad. Um, I'm very sorry that the brother had the substance abuse problem. That's another way to lose a whole lot of money is to get hooked on drugs and alcohol. That's why I suggest every black man in America should say no to drugs and alcohol. Tell your children, say no to it. We live in a country that encourages you, encourages you to use drugs. A lot of the biggest drug dealers are actually legalized pharmaceutical companies. And also alcohol is, is a deep part of American culture. In 1836, the average American drank the equivalent of about 83 bottles of whiskey every year. America is a country of drunks. And they make a lot of money by making you think that alcohol is safe when actually alcohol destroys a lot of lives. Vin Baker is a great example of that. He talks very uh, regularly about his alcohol addiction and what that did to him, how it destroyed his life. So long story short, uh, when you get this money, just be smart. You don't have to be a financial wizard. You don't have to be a budget nista or incredibly frugal with your money. Just do just don't work so hard to destroy your wealth, because when you make that kind of money and you throw that money away, you're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting everybody who loves you. You're hurting everybody who could have benefited from your your from your choices. You're hurting all of the thousands of children you could have educated by building a school. You're hurting all the hundreds of families you could have helped by building a business and building an institution that would employ black people. You're hurting all of your descendants who could have benefited from the massive amount of wealth that you could have built during your lifetime. So it ain't just about you, Vin, and you throwing away your money in your life. That's sad. That's a tragedy. Absolutely. It's about all the people who were affected. That's all I really want to say. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. If you want to learn more, if you want to study and take my class, uh, go to visit theblackwealthbootcamp.com. That's theblackwealthbootcamp.com. We talk about this kind of stuff all the time because uh, we're not just going to complain about racism. We're going to do something about it. All right. Until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. I am gone. Peace. I just usually judge people by the tone that they use when they say it. So it's been used as both on a regular basis. So, I mean, it is what it is, though. It Listen, I think they need this. I think it's a few things they need to do. I think Ku Klux Klan members need to not be able to wear hoods no more. We need to see who's behind those motherfucking hoods when, they, when those flags. And, and, and I think that the flag, you should still be able to fly it in, on your personal. Like, you, you can still have it on your cars.